This is the Tom Bigby Tales, and I'm your host, Shannon Evans. I write about a small town in northeast Mississippi on the Tom Bigby River called Columbus. Sometimes I write about the rest of the state. This episode is about Dr. Lillian Eichelberger Cannon, class of 1914 from the IINC. Dr. Lillian Velma Eichelberger Cannon was born September 13, 1893, in Knoxby County, Mississippi, to Phil and Huldy Eichelberger. They lived in Macon, where her father operated a mill and farmed. By 1910, the family moved with their widowed mother to Columbus and lived um, on about two blocks from the Industrial Institute and College, now Mississippi University from Women. It was in the fall of 1910 that Lillian would enroll and the, at the college in which she would graduate in 1914. In the 1920 census, she is found living in Chicago and attending and working as a file clerk at the University of Chicago. She entered the Master of Science program there in either 1916 or 1917, where she earned her master's in 1919. She would earn her PhD there in 1921 in biochemistry, and she would work for the university in the Pritzkin School of Medicine. After completing her PhD in 1921, she married Ralph H. Cannon in Chicago in 1925. Ralph graduated from the University of Chicago and was a reporter for the local papers. By 1950, he's the editor of the Chicago Daily. Lillian's career is equally, if not more, brilliant than her husband's. During World War II, the Japanese had cut off the Allies' access to cinchona bark, which is a, a substance used to derive quinine or quinine depending on where you're from, a necessary agent in the prevention and treatment of malaria. In 1934, German researchers at Bayer Laboratories had been tasked by their government to find a quinine alternative. They had created resochin or resokin, but found the side effects of this was so toxic that they abandoned their research. In World War II, the German Africa Corps used an alternative synthetic that Bayer had derived, known as Santochin. After the Axis Control Tunis fell to Allied forces, samples of Santochin were sent back to the U.S. to be analyzed and manufactured. This led to the University of Chicago's Department of Medicine involvement and the involvement of Dr. Eichelberger. The isolation of their anti-malarial compound, primaquine, was started. In order to test the efficacy of their synthetic quinine, the researchers needed a human test group willing to be infected with malaria and then treated with their primaquine. Eichelberger was instrumental in gaining the test subjects at Stateville Penitentiary through Nathan Leopold, a former University of Chicago student, who with his accomplice Richard Loeb were the most notorious murderers of that era, considering that their murder was a thrill murder. Leopold's volunteering for the malarial study will eventually be what prompts his parole after serving 33 years of a life plus 99 years sentence. Why did Eichelberger resort to prisoners? Well, malaria was not prevalent in the U.S. at that point. The only population rife with malaria was the syphilitic community confined to mental institutions who were purposely infected with malaria to fight the uh, syphilitic spiracytes that impacted their bodies. That population was not deemed healthy enough nor able to give consent. Eichelberger and team were then given access to the prisoners. 
Leopold, who had graduated from the University of Chicago at 18, wanted to not only be part of the study, but proved instrumental in recruiting <clears throat> other prisoners to participate. Leopold would not only work as a test subject and recruiter, but as a lab tech and clerical worker on the project as well. He was one of the first test subjects to be treated with the new drug after being infected with a very virulent form of malaria. He would eventually be paroled in the late, late 1950s and remain involved in parasitological, ooh, parasitological, I'm not really good with this word, research, parasite research, until his death in 1971. This work, while necessary to win the war in the minds of the U.S. military leadership, and of course with most Americans, would become a watershed event in the ethics of experimentation on prisoners going forward. The Malarial Research pro Project by the University of Chicago on inmates ended, and the federal government announced it would no longer use federal prisoners for medical research. While the prisoners at Statesville consented to participate, as a matter of fact, many fought to try and get into the project. It was under coercive conditions at a point that would be used by Nazi doctors from concentration camps who were on trial at Nuremberg. The results of the test not including the ethical questions, however, speak for themselves. The work of Eichelberger, the other researchers, Leopold, and every other prisoner who volunteered saved lives, not only in World War II, but in Korea and Vietnam. Some of the protocol from this drug is still being used for future studies and current studies to fight certain cancers it is also found effective as an antiviral to fight inflammatory diseases and inflammatory responses in the body. It is also found effective in fighting respiratory viral responses brought on by COVID-19 and certain other autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis. Lillian Eichelberger Cannon would remain with the university for over 40 years. She would carry on as a professor emeritus after that. She died January 12, 1996, and is buried beside her husband, Ralph, in the Oddfellow Cemetery in Macon, Mississippi. She is yet another exceptional W girl. Thank you for coming on my episode of the Tom Bigby Tales. Until next time.